Hey there, welcome back. We are going to do some basic shapes in Illustrator. So let's go ahead and open up Illustrator. I've got it here in my dock, so I can click that. But in case you don't, we'll go to Finder. And go to Applications. And go ahead and find it here. And there it is right there. You can open it up from there. You can, put it, you can do that as well. So here we are. So we're gonna create new. I'm gonna to go to, um, it's got recent, so it's got what I've last used, but if you don't have that, you can go to print. I'm gonna to go to letter, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it landscape. Everything else I can ignore for now, and hit create. I've got my uh, windows over here, okay? So I have swatches open, color, and layers, okay? And if you don't have any of those, they are right here, and you can pull them out from this um, you know, list of windows right there. Let's go ahead and start. So the first tool we wanna make sure we're aware of is a selection tool. Uh, v is the shortcut to it. You should always remember the shortcuts because you wanna be able to um, go to this toolbar with, you know, with the cursor the least amount of times as possible. You wanna use the shortcuts wherever you can. So V is a shortcut for that, okay? This moves things around. We don't have anything to move around right now, but we will in a second. So we're gonna go down to this tool right here, the rectangle tool, okay? So you can click on the rectangle tool and hold down with the right click button. You're gonna see more shapes that we have options, okay? I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on this and then holding it down and I can switch it to different tools. But for now, let's go ahead and click on the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag a rectangle. So I'm clicking and dragging and I'm gonna just let go. Okay, and see what it's given us here. So I'm, now I went back to my move tool here, V, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. So command plus, command plus on the keyboard with my other hand. And let's take a look at this basic shape. So we can see a black line around it and the inside is white. Now if I look at my colors up here, so I'm looking at my controls and I can see that I have white on this first button here. And this is the fill color. And over here on the stroke, I have a black color selected. And you can tell it's a stroke by the little hole they have in the middle. They're trying to show you a uh, color around a shape, okay? And the same thing here on the toolbar. I have white for the fill, and if I hold the cursor over it, you can see it says fill. And on the stroke, you can see here that it's black. And that's exactly what it gave me. Now I've got my uh, selection tool here, and you can see I can pick it up and move it around. Because there's white in here, I can pick it up by the uh, any part of it, really. But there's also these other little buttons here, okay? So look at the edges here. And when I'm on the black arrow of the selection tool, I often call it the black arrow and the white arrow because there's two here. But we'll talk about that one later. If I grab it by one of these little rectangles, it's going to do something different. It's going to change the shape. Okay, so you can go ahead and try that here. And I can click on these rectangles. If I click on the line, it's going to move it. But if I click on the little squares, these little control sections, I can change it, okay? So obviously I can bring it in, I can bring it out, and I can also do this. Watch, if I click, I'm sorry, if I get my cursor right in the corner, but not exactly on the corner, but right above it, like there, right outside of it, it turns to this little curved uh, line with arrows. And that's how I rotate things or one of the ways I can rotate things. Okay, I'm gonna undo it just because I wanna keep it straight. Well, you can you can try it, okay? So let's just go ahead and you can try rotating it. And by the way, if I haven't said, this tutorial I'm giving you, you're, it's meant for you to be able to follow along. So follow along at whatever pace um, you can keep up and pause where you need to. Pause me and do what I said and then come back and hit play, right? So just follow along and pause as you need to. So once again, um, holding the cursor right on the outside, I can rotate things. Okay, now let's say I wanna get it back to straight. So easiest way I can do it is to go to my keyboard and hit Command Z on the keyboard, all right? So I'm gonna hold down Command. Again, I'm doing this with my left hand. Command Z, Command Z. I'm, just, I'm holding down Command the whole time and just hitting Z over and over again until I get back to where it's straight. And I went one further. And I can always do edit, it's also up here, redo and edit undo. And you can see that the 
shortcut is Command Z. So barely ever go up to here unless I need to redo something, and it's Shift Command Z. I just I just usually go up there. I very rarely redo. Usually it's always undo that I do, and so that's Command Z. Okay, so <clears throat> we have our shape here. Let's look at how we can change the colors of it. So if you click on, I'm just going up to my control bar up here, I call this a control bar. And the first one, the fill color, if I open this up, I've got a bunch of colors here, okay? But I can also go here to my swatches and pick colors as well. And you see when I select a color, it's gonna change that fill because that's what I have selected right here. If I look at my toolbar, all these things kind of control the same thing, okay? The swatches, this um, button up here, and this in the toolbar, all connect, control the color here. Now watch, if I switch it and I click on the stroke, now you can see the stroke uh, box is in front now. So now when I change a color, it's gonna affect that and not the fill color, okay? So stroke and fill color need to get the difference between those things, okay? Now check this out, I've got my stroke selected here because I can see that it's in front. Now when I go over on this control, uh, I can see that I've got this stroke um, button right here and it says one point, and that's how thick it is. Now I can go two points, four points, but whatever I want. I can even do it so much it closes all the way up, but I can control the thickness of the stroke, okay? So we're gonna leave this rectangle like that. Whatever colors you've got is fine. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, Command minus, and I'm gonna use my space bar. Give myself some room here. And let's go ahead and try another shape. So let, let's do, actually, you know what? Let's do one more rectangle, but this time I want you to do something when you make it. So now watch. I'm gonna hold down Shift with my left hand on the keyboard, and now I'm gonna drag a box, and now you can see the proportions are constrained to make it square. So by holding down Shift, I can make perfect squares. Okay, I'm gonna undo those last three. And it's still got these little uh, control boxes here that I can move things around, okay? And if you notice, it's the same color as the one I made before. And that's just what it does. It keeps the color the same. Now it doesn't have to be the same. I can go ahead and change everything. Now watch, I'm, I still have the strokes selected out here. So it's gonna change that color, but I can change, oh, that's an ugly, ugly green there. Let me go ahead and change it. I'm gonna go ahead and select the fill color. And I want you to go ahead and make this a different color, okay? So just so you know how to change the colors. Oh, look at this, I'm on CMYK. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this while I'm thinking about it. I like to work in HSB. And the way to change that is to go to this little drop down, uh, little uh, menu over here, and it has them on all the windows. Whoops, did not mean to do that one. And go here and change it to HSB. I just like to be able to make colors darker quickly like this, or lighter, or I don't really use the hue as much, changing the hue sometimes, but I like to add black or white to my color um, easily there. Okay, so that's it for our rectangles. Let's now go ahead and hold down the cursor on the uh, tool for the rectangle tool here, and I'm gonna change it to the ellipse tool, okay? And I'm gonna hold down space bar and move this over a little bit to give myself some room. And I'm now gonna go ahead and drag this open. And look at that, it made a oval or an ellipse. Same thing, I can go ahead and select it, right? I can rotate it. I can change the shape. And you can change the color as well. So let's go ahead and do that just because. Make sure we know how to do the color change. I'm gonna now select the stroke and I'm gonna change that to a nice little blue. Okay, now if you have a shape, you can make it larger. So if I drag this, watch, it'll kind of change the shape and all sorts of stuff, right? But let's say I have this, the perfect ellipse or oval that I want. This is like perfect. And I wanna keep it the same and make it bigger. I'm gonna hold shift down, grab a corner. Actually, can I grab, I can grab anything actually. Any of these little um, boxes here and I can make it larger and it'll be the exact same 
oval shape. Now one thing that doesn't change is the stroke width, okay? So even if I make this really small, I'm holding shift, right now the stroke looks really thick. If I make it really big, the stroke looks thinner. That's because the stroke is set to five points. So if I wanna change that right now, I have to change it by sizing it up right here in the uh, control bar, okay? All right, let's look at some other shapes here. Let's go ahead and click down. Oh, let's note one more thing. So guess what? If I hold down shift on a rectangle to make it a perfect square, you can guess that if I hold down shift with the ellipse tool, I'm gonna to make a perfect circle, okay? So go ahead and do that. And even though I, okay, just side note, if I say go ahead and do that, it's because I'm thinking about it, but obviously I want you doing all this, all right? If this is, you know, you're learning Illustrator, I want you to do all the steps that I'm giving you to, um, you know, copy what I'm doing here. At least that's how I'm approaching uh, teaching you. So we've got a perfect circle, we've got an oval, we've got a perfect square, we've got a rectangle. Let's see what else we've got in here. Polygon tool, okay, this is interesting. Polygon tool, so now look at this. This goes all sorts of ways when I move this around. It doesn't stay, um, you know, as a perfect, you know, lined up polygon in terms of like the bottom being um, um, parallel with the edge of the paper or whatever. To do that, I need to hold down shift. Okay, if I hold down shift, it is gonna make my polygon lined up perfectly with the uh, edge of the paper, right? Or parallel to it. Okay, and once again, it made it the uh, exact same color as the last shape I made. And let's change it just to get used to changing colors of things. I click on the stroke now. And what goes well? Let's do orange. That would go well with my dark blue, maybe? It's not really dark blue, it's more purple. Let's change that to a blue. All right, there we go. Okay, and let's take a look at the polygon tool again here. I'm gonna hold down shift, but I also wanna do something else. I want to um, make more sides, okay? And the way to do that is to use the arrows on the keyboard, okay? So if I don't want it to be just a one, two, three, four, five, the, the first one it came out with had six sides, and say I want five sides, I can just hit the down arrow, uh, down arrow once, go to five sides. Let's say I want to still line it up perfectly, I can hold down shift, and then it'll, uh, it'll make a perfect um, polygon. And what I do is I hold down shift, let go of the click on the, on the uh, pen or the mouse, and then I let go of shift, okay? So you let go of shift after. Okay, let's make one more here. So um, we've made two so far. So I want you to change the shape and let's make one with more. So now I can make as many as I want and it'll just look like a circle pretty much because there's so many polygons. It's kind of pointless unless you need something like that. But, you know, any number, you know, you hold it down, it'll, it'll make that many sides. Okay, and one last thing uh, we can do to uh, change the sides on this um, polygon is this little button over here, um, little uh, widget, I think is what they're calling them. Um, and you can slide it up and down even after you've made your shape and change the amount of sides on the polygon. So there it is, kind of hidden right there on the side. You can give it more or less sides. Okay, so that's how you control the polygon tool. And that's fine, they're all the same color, that's fine. Just moved it out of the way again using the hand tool with the space bar. Okay, let go of the hand tool back to and back to the black arrow. I'm gonna go to my polygon tool and I'm gonna check out the star tool. Okay, let's see what this does. Makes a star, kind of like the polygon tool. If I want it to be straight, I need to hold down shift. Okay, and let's go ahead and change the color of that for fun just to make sure we know how to do it. So I'm changing the stroke, changing the fill color. Let's see. All right, so I've got a star. Okay, now there's a couple other things with a star. As you have guessed, you can probably, um, you've probably guessed, sorry, 
uh, you can change the amount of points. And guess how? With the arrows, of course, you can go as little as three points, right? Which makes me a triangle if I need a triangle. So did the polygon tool can make a triangle as well. But I can make all sorts of different stars here. And once again, if I hold shift at the end, so I can use the arrows to give myself as many points as I want, then I can hold down shift and then let go. And it'll give me my, um, my star shape. Okay, you can see how the points are, how it's affected uh, by the stroke here. Okay, let's try one more thing with a star. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another star. I wanna show you one other way. I'm going to go down back to a normal star with, well, normal, a uh, stereotypical star with um, five points. And I want to show you one other thing, right? So I controlled that with the arrows. And once I got down here, whoops, too many. There we go. I can hold down another button that's going to give me another change. I can hold down option. So check that out. Option changes the shape of the star from this kind of like, I don't know what to call it, Kind of like cartoony bloated kind of looking star to a more angular star right kind of aligns up those lines so i can hold down option now i can hold down shift as well and let go and now i've got a different kind of shape star here okay and that's it for stars let's check out this last one here line segment Okay, what does this do? So I'm just gonna drag, click and drag, and I can see what it does. Look at that, it makes a line. That's it, nothing really to it, just makes a line. And I can change the stroke thickness as well. Lines can also be there if there's zero thickness to the stroke as well. It's still there, and the way the vector program works is it's it's a calculation, right? I'm making a calculation, and there's a calculated line here. It just has no stroke applied to it but I'll put a little stroke on there. And let's see what else we can do. If there's anything else we can do this line tool. I can hold shift and make it straight, straight up and down, or straight left to right. I can hold down option and have it grow out from where I click from. So check this out. So instead of going in one direction, I can hold option down and it's gonna grow from that midpoint, right? And I can still hold down shift if I want, but it's gonna grow that way. And I believe that's all we need now is just that, all right? So there's our line tool. And those are our basic tools here. I'll put it back to rectangle um, to make different shapes, all right? And out of these shapes, uh, you can build so many things, you can make so many logos, and we can make things look clean and crisp by doing all sorts of things with these shapes, all right? But that is the basic intro to the shapes tool and to manipulating the colors with the fill and with the stroke buttons up here or here. All right, um, hope you learned something and hope to see you on the next one.